Hello, I'm Pauline Holder and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're at the Watermill Restaurant on Chauvin Road. This restaurant is named after the mill which forms part of its architecture. Now the watermill seen here on the property was part of the Chauvin Estate which was bought in the 1900s by the Golden Grove Estate. We'll tell you more about the mill and the restaurant right after we tell you what's happening in our stories this week. The Independence Plan, what you need to know about the parade route and traffic changes. Giving Tobagonians the tools they need to become entrepreneurs. And our table tennis players strike gold in Guyana. Welcome back to Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're on Chauvin Road at the Watermill Restaurant, which takes its name from a mill on the property. Now this well once supplied water to the estate. It was fully functional up until the 1997 earthquake in Tobago, which resulted in an estimated $5 million in damage across the island. Since then, the well has run dry. But let's leave it there for now to tell you about this island's independence plans. As you know, next week on August 31st, this country will be celebrating its break from Great Britain. This means preparations have begun for all the pomp and ceremony that celebrate the final lowering of the Union Jack back in 1962. And as is customary, there will be a parade on this island. But this year's procession will have a new addition. The Air Guard plans to fly over, not once, but twice, with two of their planes. The police too are doing their part, and to ensure it all runs smoothly, there will be some traffic changes. Here's Davia Chambers to walk us through those changes. Now, there isn't much happening here at the parade ground, but come August 31st, as Trinidad and Tobago celebrates independence, it will come to life as the military parade fills this space. As usual, to facilitate this, changes will be made to the regular flow of traffic. Between 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. on that Saturday, traffic will be restricted along the Claude Noel Highway from this traffic light at Bacolet to this one at Wilson Road. There'll be no entry onto the highway from Frenchfield Road, Bac Bagatelle Road, Claude Codler Hall Road, Northside Road, Dal Spring Road and Wilson Road onto Claude Noel Highway. But no worries because ASP George says there are alternative routes. Vickers traveling west along Windward Road, Claudwell Highway, we turn onto the Windward Road, Bacillet, into Scarborough from the traffic light. Vickers traveling east along the Claudwell Highway will turn onto the Orange Hill Road and proceed into Scarborough. As for parking, no vehicles will be allowed to park along Wilson Road between Claude Noel Highway and Milford Road as well as other areas. Post Office Street, Garnside Street and between Dal Spring and Carrington Street. Also, the public car parks at Garnside Street, Market Square and NIB Mall would be closed off to the public. But if you want to be a part of the parade, you can. ASP George says the public is invited to walk alongside the parade with the 18 detachments, 9 armed and 9 unarmed. It begins at 8 a.m. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. Health and wellness are issues that are ever present in our consciousness thanks to research and clever marketing. Sure, it's always been good to be healthy, but today it's also cool and Tobago is getting in on this craze. As Caroline Wallace tells us, the island's efforts got some help from the Cuban ambassador to Trinidad and Tobago. They got their glucose levels checked, made sure their blood pressure reading is normal, tested their cholesterol level, all for free, at a health fair with the Cuban nurses and doctors stationed in Tobago to ensure that their population becomes more health conscious. The team of the nurses first to take care how much was the blood pressure, how much was the the health and then pass to see the three general medicine doctors, general practitioner, as well as some of our nine consultants that came. Having an integrated primary health care service is very critical 
and the ambassador is glad that his fellow countrymen can assist in developing Tobago's. That have been done because the skill and experience of our doctors and nurses that are happy, the 19 working right now in Tobago, we know that most probably the number of them will increase. We are expecting the, the request in order to be considered by our authorities in Cuba. This health fair is all part of the Division of Health and Social Services goal to provide accessible, professional and quality health care to citizens. I am Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. It's a bold move which puts management out there and opens up their operations to the critical eyes of the public. Few organizations take this step, but that's exactly what the Tobago Regional Health Authority, the TRHA, is doing. They've designed a series of programs that allow them to interact and share their plans. But they're not the only ones talking. Ordinary people like you and I get the opportunity to ask questions and make suggestions. Let's take a look at their recent meeting. They came out to express their concerns about the public health system in Tobago and among the questions they want the medical chief of staff and his team to answer are what's being done to reduce the number of Tobagonians with renal failure. For, and for the TRHA, we are advocating that one, health promotion, prevention, and that um, each and every one visit their primary care physician so that if, they, if there is renal failure, it will be diagnosed early on so it can be treated before it advances into end-stage renal disease. And why patients are still being transferred to Trinidad? RHA system is, was originally designed on one that requires inter-facility transfer to access um, services. This is all in the name of transparency. You see, the board of the Tobago Regional Health Authority is trying to focus on improved health care delivery on the island. This primary goal is constantly challenged due to the expanding expectations of not just the people, but in keeping with the national mandate for the re regional health authorities to provide quality services based on existing and emerging standards of care geared towards the attainment of accreditation. She says that the public should know that accredited services are important because it signifies that the quality of service is of the highest standard and is being continuously improved. The TRHA wants to do just that with the new Scarborough General Hospital, even as it faces increased demand over the last seven months. For the first seven months of operation at the Scarborough General Hospital, so far, a total of 29,671 persons have utilized the Accident and Emergency Department. Part of their plan also includes changing one unit from offering part-time services to one that's full-time. Due to the shortage of hematologists worldwide, we, there's a strategic problem with attracting uh, hematologists to Tobago. But we are in negotiations now with a hematologist who should arrive soon. And for primary health care, a 24 hours health center is on the drawing board. Currently, Canaan goes from 8 to 8. We, we intend to push a 24 hour service in Canaan, but we want to do it gently. From We'll go to 12 and then we'll go to 8 in the morning. Well, should all this work out, Tobagonians will be on the receiving end of holistic health care services from the Regional Health Authority. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take a break, but coming up, the story of Tobago's eight medal hall. Stay with us for the details. Sit Tobago, ready to provide your community with the highest degree of professional services in emergency response. Contact Sit Mariah at 660-0065 or Sit Speyside at 660-6096. Search 24 hour services, emergencies, medical or other. Search Pro, the new face of emergency management. This is Let's Talk Tobago. Welcome back to the Watermill Restaurant on Chauvin Road. This tower is the base of the pump windmill, which was used to pump water from the well to the big sugar mill on the estate. 
built in the 1700s, the tower is made from fire brick from England as well as coral blocks. And we're told there are still a few of these mills left on Tobago. But let's come back to the present and a social intervention program designed to help families become financially independent. The idea is not just to give them money, but to provide training that allows them to get a foot in the door and ensure their business ventures are sustainable. That's Marlene Stanisclaus, who made her dream into a reality, even though initially she thought she did not have enough funds to ensure it materialized. But that changed when she heard about the REACH program by the Division of Health and Social Services. I will tell anyone that because of REACH, I, oh, I got my, um, my first half of my grant, and it boosts me a lot. I must thank Marilyn, the lady who gets the wool from Trinidad for me, and um, I'm doing pretty fine. The acronym REACH means the realization of economic achievement and focuses mainly on economic empowerment and poverty eradication among vulnerable families around Tobago so people, like Marlene, can gain economic independence. The program provides individuals with grant funding to establish micro-business enterprise, training and development projects as well. Some of our objectives within the REACH program are, one, to promote self-empowerment, entrepreneurship and self-sufficiency. And it's clear that many families across the island want to become entrepreneurs as the program has seen over 500 applications since its inception in 2005. 347 of those persons have been approved to receive $7,500 to build their business. We have seen a drastic reduction in terms of the number of persons now being assisted by our grants within the social service system, which tells me that a lot of people are moving from the social assistance programs and becoming self-sufficient. But the REACH program is not working alone. They partner with other organizations to make certain all persons who should benefit, benefits. When Mr. Nancis, in a, in a casual way initially, informed me about the REACH program, and when he mentioned that there was a grant, and when I realized that YTEP's trainees would have access to monies, of course, he was my best friend, or indeed my second best friend. And this trainee grabbed the opportunity. And with that, I am planning to get my supplies so that I can actually start the process of making my jewelry. The program hopes to continue to build Tobagonian entrepreneurs. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. Guyana might be an hour's plane ride away, but getting there was no easy task for the athletes you're about to meet. So bad was it that the Trinidad and Tobago Table Tennis Association had to appeal for monies to fund their trip. But these players are clearly focused and determined. Once they got to their destination, they gave it their all, an effort that has been handsomely rewarded because they're responsible for more than half of the medal haul for this country. Caroline Wallace has the details. Family, friends, and loved ones don't just gather at solemn times, but when there are joyous occasions to celebrate. Today, they are here to congratulate the Tobagonians who were a part of Victoria's Team Trinidad and Tobago for the Caribbean pre cadet Table Tennis Championships. Out of the 14 medals won by this country, our Tobagonian athletes won eight. It was really a truly overwhelming experience to be beating other people of the Caribbean. And we, have, we start to beat people of this Latin American, the Spanish. And remember, these are homegrown players. None of them have trained outside of Trinidad and Tobago, more so Tobago. He says this is just the beginning for the table tennis athletes. We have achieved this under difficult conditions. And uh, through the hardship, we have raised. We have raised over the occasion over the difficulties and um, I, I say that once that our administration with God willing see the vision that we have to put things in place, table tennis could be a forerunner for this country and our nation. Through those hardships, Tobagonian Joshua Degans excelled exceptionally, winning all events she participated in, the doubles, mixed doubles and the singles event. I want to thank Coach Abbott for all he has done 
He has helped me go through this tournament successfully, so I thank him for his hard work. I want to say this tournament was the best tournament I ever went to, and it was the best because I performed and I did my best in training, and that made me do good and get all the goals in whatever I participated in. The Department of Sport gave financial assistance to the TNT Table Tennis Association to facilitate this trip. Of the 19 players on this under-15 national team, 13 of them are Tobagonians. I am Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. You might remember that controversial Time magazine cover on breastfeeding. It ignited a debate about what's known as attachment parenting, and to some extent, the appropriateness of breastfeeding in the public's eyes. That happened just last year, and as the theory played out, some were baffled as to why so many were outraged, especially in this day and age. But truth be told, breastfeeding still needs cheerleaders. It's why a group of mothers and healthcare providers worked together in support of this cause. All children deserve a healthy start in life, and what better way to provide this than through breastfeeding? But the advocates want to reach as wide an audience as possible so they have organized this walk to raise awareness about its benefits. The campaign focuses and facilitates action that protects, promotes, and supports breastfeeding. In this beautiful island of Tobago, to welcome you as we gather here today in celebration of World Breastfeeding Week. And I want to thank you so much for joining in this walk and breakfast this morning in support of breastfeeding. Activists like All Rosemary have been pushing their message for the last 21 years. They've taken it to over 170 countries, trying to get more mothers and communities on board with the idea that there are many advantages to breastfeeding their little ones. We understand the importance of breastfeeding in terms of the well-being both for your mother and the baby. Breastfeeding in terms of the mother, there are benefits because the more you breastfeed as a, pre as a delivered mother, the faster you'll get back to your pre-pregnant state and shape. So it's important for you to breastfeed. In addition to you breastfeeding your babies, it means that your baby will be healthy, wealthy and wise. And what's cheaper than breast milk? So from an economic standpoint, it's the least expensive. It's all nature's way of helping to nail to children and kickstart the development process from a tender age. It is also, of course, a natural resource for our young babies. The act of breastfeeding also serves to provide that natural bond between mother and child. So today's walk reinforces and also educates both mothers and fathers to the benefits of breast milk in the early development of a child's life. Something these mom understand quite well, having participated in a competition titled Best Breast Fed Baby. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. We're taking another break, but on the other side, young iron chefs in the making. You're viewing Let's Talk Tobago. Thanks for joining us at the Watermill Restaurant on Chauvin Road. This place is managed by Dos Santos Dillon and head chef Kevin Pariag. They specialize in seafood dinners from Monday to Saturday. And as you can see, the architecture complements and preserves the aesthetics of the mill's coral and fire brick look. And speaking of looks, let's face it, our children are being raised in a world where appearances are everything. They face peer pressure from all angles and some studies support the view that their primary source of learning is not from the home and the parents. Given these challenges though, how then do we teach them good, wholesome values while giving them the space and freedom to fit in? Well, here in Tobago, a camp did just that. Here's how. 
Ever wanted to be a cool kid? Well, depending on your definition of cool, you may not have gotten that chance, but over 90 children are now cool kids by learning various skills throughout the July-August vacation that will not just take them away from being at home all day, but instead help with their performance at school. How did they achieve this? At the Division of Community Development and Cultures, Cool Kids Summer Camp. For our um, field trips, we would have gone to the AVT riding at Black Rock. We'd have um, done the Hope Farm. We'd have taken them to swimming at the YMCA um, pool. And we would have had sign language, ballroom dancing, and lectures coming out from different divisions. For instance, we had the health services. The cool kids are walking away with a lot of knowledge from this one camp that lasted for three weeks. One, they would have a wider knowledge of local craft in Tobago. Two, they will have a wider knowledge on actual leadership because we will have had a workshop on leadership. And you know what I think would um, stick out or stand out in most of them, that they would be able to communicate more better through work and play. And the kids soaked it all up. Well, at first it's nice because it's something educational and you learn how to make things and they carry on feed you to learn about other things. Coloring, playing, painting, how to travel, we learn about animals, we learn about science sign language, we learn about how to, how to do the alphabet with our hands. We learn painting, coloring, we do a mask, and we learn singing, and we dance. The camp's coordinator attributes its success to a well-thought-out program that puts the kids' needs first. What we try to do is that we try to make it homely and comfortable. We have all the facilitators, you know, well-trained, professionally trained, actually. So, you know, we try to make it homely and welcoming to the children. That when they leave home, you know, they want to feel welcome. The camp is now on its third year, and they are hoping to have it bigger and better next year. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. Shows like Chopped, Dinner Impossible and Cupcake Wars have changed the way the average person now views food. For the converted, it's no longer about throwing together a few ingredients. Well, maybe it is, but now the stakes are a bit higher. It must not only taste good, but the culinary experience, beginning with the look and presentation, must pass the test. And the group we're about to introduce you to is getting a head start on the competition. As Crystal George tells us, they've been taught the basics of putting together a great meal. When this camp gourmet kids culinary began two years ago, it was the first of its kind in Tobago. For one week, children between 7 to 17 years old got an opportunity to learn the art of cooking. From 2011 to now, it has grown into popularity. Parents want their children to learn to cook, and children want to learn as well. It must be noted that both boys and girls, as you can see, because we have roughly equal numbers of, of male and female campers, they are all excited about being part of this exciting experience. And it wasn't all about mixing, chopping and tasting. The lesson these participants learned went beyond the art of cooking. They were taught how to behave in and out of the kitchen. We um, also try to teach them stuff like etiquette, table manners, being polite, kind to each other because we live together in this world. Sometimes I would live in a house across there, you live across there, but we live together because we're in the same country, we're in the same world. But the plan is only half of the project. No camp can really claim to be truly successful unless the people it's designed for give their nod of approval. This club taught me so much. I learned to bake, I learned simple recipes that I know of the bat, of the bat, I know... <sighs> So much, so much that I didn't know before. And my parents, my, the reason why my parents kept pushing me into this club is because they are seeing results, fast results too. It wasn't just cooking. I mean, don't get me wrong, the cooking was a big part and a real eat. But um, I came to this camp basically knowing like no one at all. And Today is the last day and I'm going to leave me having so many friends. And for their hard work and persistence, the camp's participants receive certificates of appreciation. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago.
Some communities now have it all, at least in the area of sports and recreational grounds. They no longer need to schedule their games and activities from dusk to dawn. They can stay as long as they need to. No more packing up when they lose natural light. And here's why. Those are villagers from Mason Hall, and that's their newly commissioned recreational ground. And yes, they're still here, although night has fallen. No longer do the sporting enthusiasts from that area have to head home when the sun sets. But their neighbors in Moriah also have their own facility to use at any time, and the villagers are being urged to produce at a higher level. Now they have not only access to the grounds, but lights. Let us be happy that we are going to have these facilities to our use. I hope that we can make good use of it. Do not destroy it for God's sake. The recreational facilities are an investment in our sporting talents on the island to harness and hone the skills of Tobagonian athletes, like these footballers. According to the Chief Secretary of London, Tobago has the best ratio of recreational facilities to persons compared in Trinidad and even the rest of the Caribbean region. But this is not the end. In a few months, 15 more grounds are expected to be fully lit and 8 more by the end of this fiscal year. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from you, our viewers. If it wasn't clear before, there should be no misunderstandings after Tobago's budget presentation. Then, the Secretary for Finance and Enterprise Development explained that the Tobago House of Assembly plans to upgrade the human capital on this island and will be doing so through the expansion of tertiary education. He says some of the work has already started with the Assembly providing financial assistance to Tobagonian students. That's the THA's investment. But we wanted to know what role can you play? So we're asking, what more do you think can be done to provide graduates with increased opportunities for employment? This is what you said. I was thinking that um, graduates should be taught from school or should be guided from school to into um, self-employment um, self to learn that the government cannot employ everybody and they have to try branching off on their own. I think that they should be given opportunity, more opportunities, um, funding opportunities, training, um, and various facilities to foster them becoming entrepreneurs. Well, this is where the guidance counselors in the school are supposed to prepare them for the job market. Depend on what field you are in, the departments could at least have an internship program so that the employ the students, they can have like work experience and have knowledge about the field before they enter into the workplace. They should, should try to learn a trade. So while they waiting on, the, on their dream job, they could always do a little welding or do a little electrician, a little plumbing, you know, to keep them going. In Tobago, I am saying the first thing we have to do is look at our needs and make sure that in the development of our young people, we provide programs as far down as the primary school through our secondary systems, where our young people can go into these disciplines very early. And that's how we bring this week's edition of Let's Talk Tobago to a close. Do remember you can send us your comments to information at tha.gov.tt or visit us at www.tha.gov.tt. Like us on Facebook and add us to your YouTube playlist. I'm Colleen Holden. On behalf of all of us at the Department of Information, have a safe and enjoyable week. And as we go, here's a final look at the Watermill Restaurant.